Hello all, here is Shlomo Cooper and I'm a senior analyst at TradeNet and it's great to be here right now with you one and a half hours before the week starting to run and we want to take uh, the time to, uh, we have some great materials to share with you and uh, we are going to take a look on the pattern in the S&P 500 true or false we are just at all time highs but and we saw a, a, a slightly breakout on Thursday is it going uh, to ride up or is it just a, a, a or is, is it just a false we are going to take a look on the massive triangle technical form that uh, is on the chart of the S&P 500 more than that, a couple of uh, weeks ago, we recommended to go on NFLX. Uh, this was one of the questions uh, we got from you. So my congratulations for those who took 12% uh, on NFLX. And I think it has much more room to go up. And we are going to take a look on NFLX. This week's uh, question uh, came from one of our traders regarding uh, regarding um, Yelp and with all the rumors surrounding Yelp about the buyout about the pending buyout should we just jump on Yelp and should the buyout materialize how much could one expect to gain from Yelp? So we are going to uh, put some thoughts uh, into that. As always, we are going uh, to look and uh, on the earnings season, which comes to the end uh, this week with the uh, Walmart earnings uh, uh, scheduled on Tuesday. The dollar index, uh, we saw the dollar sliding down a little bit in uh, recent uh, weeks. What does it mean for the international stocks and for the domestic stock? Right now, it's just uh, hovering above some uh, support uh, is a support it reached uh, earlier uh, last year should it hold the support and come back uh, raise its heads uh, back up what does it mean and uh, what does it mean for us as investors and what stocks could gain could benefit from a uh, such a bounce uh, from such a bounce so we are going to um, look at that as well as always we are going uh, to take a look on the economic scorecard from for last week and what is scheduled in Wall Street for this week what are the events the economic figures that are going to affect Wall Street that are going to put the most influence on Wall Street movement. Uh, so, so we are going to actually, uh, you know, to, to get ready for, for this week. And uh, last thing, last but not least, this is the IPOs. Uh, we had some great IPOs uh, recently, so I wanted to take uh, the time to ponder about uh, some hot IPOs. We will see if it's hot or not. Uh, and there are a couple of hot IPOs that I'm going to make the claim that we should get them, but at the proper price. And we are going to look at this. And of course, this week is going to be full with the uh, IPOs. What are the best IPOs that are going to make their debut in Wall Street? So a lot to talk about. Let's just uh, start. So last week, without uh, the sharp gains in Thursday, actually this last week w would end with a dip in the red. But at the end of uh, the week, the S&P 500 uh, is succeeding to get out with a a very very small gain of uh, 0.39 percent right now year to date the performance is up 3.36 percent the Nasdaq the QQQ that tracks the Nasdaq 100 is almost doubling the performance of the S&P year to date with a little bit more than six percent uh, the UUP this is the ETF that tracks the dollar index which we are going to discuss in a couple of minutes is uh, is having right now a sharp decline last uh, week more than 1.6 percent and this is a lot for the dollar currency but it's still up more than two percent since the start of the year and not a lot of movement uh, regarding the uso which tracks the oil uh, only up a uh, half a percent uh, this week which uh, make it a little bit above the zero year to date 
Uh, I want to start with um, I want to start with our stock picks, and you can get all of our stock picks here on uh, the Facebook uh, page. So I'll just write you down uh, my Facebook page, and you are more than welcome uh, to join there. Uh, lots of material there, lots of videos, lots of uh, material uh, for you guys. And uh, let's take a look on. Uh, this weekly stock picks, but even before uh, what happened to our stock picks from um, last week. So we had here Tesla TSLA above 239.50 week later, and let's look what happened to Tesla. So that was our uh, stock pick. Uh, this is the 20 239.50 dollars for Tesla. A very sharp gain for Tesla. Uh, right now, closing Friday at the top of the week, uh, just a distance, a short distance from $250, about 5% gains. Half of the position I took off the table, uh, I, I, want to, I, I took half of the profits off the table, and I'm just uh, hoping to get some more gains uh, into this week. Uh, next, uh, next trade was SM above 59.28 and th this is important guys because let's see how we are going to deal with a stock that actually gapped above our trigger so our trigger and i'll put the line here was at 59.28 around here and this is the candle the red candle you are seeing here is the candle that started off the week last week or in Monday starting at $60. That means a gap of about 70 uh, cents up. Don't chase stocks. This is, you know, one of the most major rules when it comes to trading. If a stock for a swing purposes or even for day trading is gapping more than 10, 15 uh, cents above your initial trigger, don't chase it try to find something else uh, to trade so it's not a valid trade we didn't trade that what we have for this week so for this week we have some great uh, uh, stock picks first one is yam yam brands uh, it, it holds uh, some some very known worldwide um restaurants brands like pizza hut and like kentucky fried chicken and we like yam above 94.13 it's up more than 30 percent since the start of the year a great cap formation here on the chart also a great movement on friday we have here a momentum bar and let's just see if we can get a continuation for friday's rally this week the next one is nclh over 55.38 this is a uh, the norwegian cruise lines uh, also it, it enjoyed a great rally uh, since the start of uh, the year actually it dipped a, a little bit uh, in recent uh, weeks but it made all the way back to 52 weeks high and just above 55 38 looks great both for swing trading and for day trading these are our picks for this uh, week let's uh, get you um the chart of the s p 500 this is uh, the spy that tracks the s p 500 the, 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 this is the etf and once it continues uh, rising uh, this week and in summary for this week the s p 500 tagged on as we saw 0 0.39 a uh, percent a uh, per per percent up and the very very interesting question for us is true or false was the latest break up we saw on thursday to a new historic high on the s p uh, authentic with more to come can we expect the rally to continue or will it just fizzle out these are the deliberations that investors will mull over this coming week as they try to get ready themselves for the next market movement. On Thursday of last uh, week, all right, and uh, this is the bar I'm pointing on uh, right now, uh, the S&P 500 broke up to 
a new historic highs after the sideways movement that had interrupted stock market prices over the last few months and we talked a lot about it about the triangle a massive a technical form that has been created on the chart and i'm going to uh, show you it uh, once again in a minute everyone had hoped at least in the bulls camp that the breakout from the narrow trading range would catalyze a uh, first of all a short squeeze with those betting against the market running to cover their positions and with money then taken off the sidelines and put into motion all leading the market to continue to continue rising now let's get back to the triangle technical formation this is a massive triangle forming in the S&P 500 chart and we've been escorting this formation along its evolution in recent uh, weeks so uh, the triangle first of all has its its overhead resistance right here and this is just an horizontal line that connects all recent highs of the market and just look how the sellers block any a try of the buyers to push the market higher to new all-time highs they just can't do enough to push the sellers out of the way now so so this is the first edge the first corner of this triangle the next is uh, the, the next line we are I, i'm going to draw right now on the chart is just the uptrend all right it, this is the bottom of this uh, of this technical uh, formation of this uh, triangle that actually connects all recent lows so just look how we have here some higher lows and this is corresponds with an uptrend and th and that means that the buyers are coming each time after each dip they are coming at higher prices they are willing to pay from the deep wallet more money than they were able or uh, or, or wanted to pay in in previous time so this triangle is coming to the end and uh, as you can see there is a lot of choppiness around uh, around the edge of uh, this uh, triangle and we are about to get a resolution soon now usually you see the resolution of these kind of patterns resolve to the previous uh, to the previous trend so if the previous trend was an uptrend all right one should expect to see a breakout to the upside as we saw on, on Thursday but the breakout on Thursday was on the basis of closing prices we didn't just had um, a close of the S&P 500 above the intraday high that uh, the SPY actually actually recorded a uh, in mid-December so, so so we need to see much more confirmation and the follow-through on the market to see um, to, 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 ha to get a good feeling uh, to get a good confirmation that uh, the next leg is a leg up now this triangle formation is coming towards a resolution so so, so, so and maybe the resolution is coming even this week if there is a resolution downside and we have to take it into consideration the breakdowns uh, pay attention the breakdown could be quite intense judging by some of the swings we've seen lately um this wednesday's fed minutes could be a catalyst for a break to the up or to the downside so you know this is we are going to get soon to the economic calendar for this week but this is one of the major things i want uh, to put uh, my fingers uh, on and, and i want to get ready wednesday is the you know is the is the most important day for traders around uh, this week let's get let's go to um to the 30 to the 30 minutes set chart just to look on the S&P 500 so the S&P 500 this is Monday started the week after a uh, Friday's rally this was after the great job uh, figures release and it's just what it did on Monday and uh, Tuesday just filling the gap just look how we had here the massive gap uh, created on Friday and it's just filled the gap and you have to remember that most of the gaps most of the gaps are getting filled so this is what we see a fill of the gap now when 
any market or even any um, any instrument any any stock is filling a gap all right your first hunch should be to go up all right because a uh, 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 pay attention that all the traders that actually shorted the market around here are just waiting for the market to close the gap because at the closure of the gap they are break even on their trade so they actually had a lot of pain when the market gapped up above their initial uh, position but when it came back they have right now the first um, chance to get out to run away from this um, investment without paying any toll without getting any punish and this is why we should see a reaction to the upside when the gap is filled and this is exactly what was the theme around the week so 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 we have we had here a bounce up back to to recent highs and even a breakout on Thursday and Friday is closing at all new time highs uh, just look that right now this is the rising five days moving average we have a nice space above it and as long as the market is um, trading above this line the market is innocent till prove otherwise so we have so, so we are going with the market and and we should take the we should take right now the bullish story uh, of the market rather to be a bear uh, on the market so now on Friday and, and I want to get back to the daily chart on Friday um okay and I'll just take this off um okay back to the daily chart on friday we just saw an inside day, day all right and usually after a, a, sh a sharp rally to the upside uh, we uh, the market tends you know to just uh, take the time to get it to get used to the to the to, to, to the high prices it reached a day uh, earlier the, all the investors uh, like we uh, uh, we like to say are digesting the the, the new prices and the market halted and didn't succeed in moving higher none of the hopes materialized which led to disappointment a little bit of disappointment from the latest uh, breakout the stock market could rally significantly higher in the event that the Federal Reserve pushes off its interest rate hike and we are going to talk a, a, a little bit more about it in a couple of minutes if the streak of weak economic figures continues they could prove the latest breakout to be a dud and signal a regression to the trending range seen over the late the last few months or even a larger scale correction range ranging between five and seven percent so just take into consideration that if we don't have a confirmation for the breakout breakout of uh, this uh, triangle we may we may see right now a bull trap all right all the you know all the buyers are just getting trapped uh, into this uh, breakout and if this is a bull trap which i'm not hinting it is because right now my tendency is to go with the market with the flow with the massive uptrend but if it's going to 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 to, to get into to, to to turn into a bull trap we should expect a very intense move to the other side because all the investors are going to get into the trap and to be very very surprised um the sideways price action in u.s indices with the s p 500 stubbornly refusing to break out on a sustained basis suggests that stocks are processing and deciding what to do next investor sentiment surveys and we'll get to the next slide uh, we have here uh, agree with this thesis and here on the chart we can see the percentage of respondents to investors and a sentiment survey called the AAII this, this is the abbreviation of um, association of individual investors this is a sentiment gauge of the investors in Wall Street uh, and it's published every week clearly we can see so, so, so here we see um, the blue line is the AAII sentiment 
GAJ and uh, on the chart, on the background of the chart, we see in red line the movement of the S&P 500. Now, um, we can say that uh, clearly uh, the, the, the bulls in the AAII survey have gotten extremely low. In last week's survey, bullish sentiment rolled from 27.1% to 26.7%, and uh, here you can see it with my, uh, with my um, red laser. While the size of the drop is in bullish sentiment was small, last week marks the 10th straight week that bullish sentiment has been below the bull market average and we can see here the decline in recent uh, weeks also this is the 10th decline in bullish sentiment over the last 12 weeks now that doesn't sound guys like you know <laughs> like the type of sentiment you would see you want to see you are waiting to see with the s p 500 uh, is at or right near all-time new highs but usually we just um, judge or using uh, this kind of uh, index inversely that means when we have here uh, some readings, some low readings, this is actually turns to be a bullish, a, a bullish indicator because you know this this is um, this is a reading of what the private, uh, what the personal, the private investors are doing. Usually they are wrong. So when everyone are bearish on the market and you know we are at all time all new time highs and there is some bearishness around the market maybe just maybe um all you know all the fund managers and uh, lots of investors if the market is going to break out and confirm its breakout this week are going to find out that wow they are too low in their exposure to u.s stock market and then uh, you know, and, and then they will just need to make the, their move. They will just need to buy more stocks, and this can fuel um, next uh, next rally, next uh, leg up. Last week we talked about uh, NFLX. Uh, uh, actually, it was five weeks ago. Uh, the question of the week of five weeks ago uh, was how far can NFLX go? Uh, this was one of the questions we got from one of our traders, and you know. You can't get too much excited or I think praise too much NFLX when we are talking about NFLX. Not only this is one of the very few companies in the world that are actually changing the world we are living in while we are all sitting around here. It's changing the way we consume entertainment and especially watching TV series and movies on demand. Now, this is why I just can't get enough of this stock. I just love this stock. Actually, I started recommending on this stock more than three years ago. And let's just get back to the chart. And I'll put on the chart the NFLX. Uh, this is the NFLX chart. And I'll just show you it on the weekly chart. I recommend. I started recommending it, and this was my first in uh, my first position around here around 2012 when it was traded for 77 dollars uh, this was my first entry there after actually Carl Icahn was one of the most uh, iconic and legendary investors in Wall Street made his first massive investment in the company taking a, he took it to he took to his portfolio be a big size of options on the stock so he really believed in this uh, stock and this is exactly how I just followed the smart money now had I had many rounds I have to tell you on this stock in recent uh, in recent years and since then I kept recommending you to take a position there time after time last time was just five weeks ago all in YouTube all right, so you can just roll it back and watch it again. Now, we just recommended it um, after it had a great rally, after it's a uh, great uh, earnings. And um, and if you did so, uh, my, uh, and if you took this position, my deep congratulations uh, are, are being sent to you uh, on the last sweet 12% gains 
in the stock. Now, I won't get into details now. We've already analyzed the, the stock in depth and actually gave it a huge price target of $900. And I think it has therefore much more room um, to, to, to soar and to climb. Uh, there is still much more room. Now, shares of the video streaming uh, service are now uh, up to $613, a little bit more than that. Uh, when it comes uh, w w when Friday uh, closed and that brings its market value to 37 billion dollars but I think analysts can rise to a market value of 50 billion dollars so that is much more than that Netflix is now among a uh, among the five five stocks with the very highest per share prices six hundred dollars or more and we can see them all here on the table i made for you so friday marked the first time the stock has traded uh, this high uh, all right and it's at the bottom of the five most um most expensive stock in a uh, wall street above that we have the ship hotel mexican a uh, grill restaurant cmg autozone all right uh, is it all priceline pcln and the investment group of warren buffett berkshire hathaway this is the most expensive stock in the history of wall street more than two hundred and eighteen thousand dollars per share <laughs> you can't trade it of course barely you can invest it invest in it and you know maybe take one unit and that is only if you are a wealth uh, investor okay so by the way just one share of nflx right now and now i can see it netflix could be enough for you to subscribe to the service for more than six years netflix stock is getting a bump uh, right now on rumors and this is what uh, pushed it higher on a uh, Friday uh, after a, 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 a it's getting a bump on rumors of expansion expa expansion expansion into uh, into China maybe uh, not to mention what's uh, been uh, w w what's been the theme here uh, into the stock since it reported first quarter results uh, the company actually reported the quarterly profit of 77 cents a share be beating expectations by 22 uh, percent so uh, this is uh, this is huge let's get to um let's get to 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 this week's questions uh, of the week and you can always just uh, email me your question and if this is something that we think is interesting enough for uh, you, you know all of our audience we are, will be more than happy uh, to relate to that in one of our investors uh, club here and this is the question of this week should they buy Yelp after recent buyout rumors and how much can Yelp go up if you believe various media reports this Yelp which is an online review service uh, internet site Yelp is in play but rumors you know aren't the foundation of successful long-term investing yet they can make the case from time to time for a hot speculation so let's see if this is a good speculation to put our money on for the short term not for the long term with you know all the risks involved involved around it it makes sense and it's possible buyers are looking at yet the company could be more valuable part of a larger company with a local ad sales force in place looking to maybe boost its presence in regional markets also it's costly for Yelp to hire staffers to contact with local advertisers especially when we are talking about making a contact with small and medium sized businesses being part of a larger internet company would allow Yelp for a lower cost way to get advertisers so the, the potential deal makes so much sense and actually 
it makes so much sense that even Deutsche Bank, you know, one of the most uh, uh, w w one of the most important investment houses in Wall Street, uh, Deutsche Bank said that there is a 60% chance, and I'll just flip over to Yelp. This is the chart of Yelp. A 60% chance, uh, Deutsche Bank says, that Yelp could be bought for anywhere between. Listen carefully, $59 and $85 per share. Now, that would be quite a boon considering the stock is trading for about $46 a share as of the close of Friday. Actually, should the buyout take place, Yelp may shoot up between 26% and 81% and when the rumors went into the corridors of Wall Street this was the result the massive rally uh, in Yelp that lasted for two days uh, one uh, week ago and just look on the surge in the volume that tells us that tells me there is a lot of uh, interest around this stock and in recent days all it did in last week is just consolidating a little bit uh, just uh, taking a breath a little bit a little bit of a pullback and maybe this is the chance for us to get on board now so you know if the deal would make so much sense for the business and for the stock why isn't this a layup for investors the reason actually underscores i think the perils of trying to speculate on buyouts and make short-term profits the fact is the deal may not be stuck at all if there is no buyout Deutsche Bank says the stock could lose about a quarter of its value. Now, given the uncertainty, Deutsche Bank has a $56 a share price target on the stock. That's still a tempting price that gives you a potential premium of 25% on the price uh, 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 right now when it closed Friday at 46.55. And just think that uh, if a buyout works out, it can jump even to the range of $80. Looking, uh, let's just uh, take a zoom out and uh, look uh, wh where it comes from Yelp. So actually on the chart, we can see that actually, <laughs> actually it was traded around March 2014, last year for almost $100. And since then it just decreased in its value. Actually it, uh, you know, actually, uh, Wall Street cut more than half of its value uh, in last 12 months. But you know, should the buyout works out, all right, you are going to see it back uh, to the high. So you know the risks. Uh, this is a hot speculation. There are, by the way, many spe speculation, good speculation around Wall Street, and uh, not just on Yelp. There are rumors regarding a CRM sales for that. It's search it, 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 right now. The management there is searching for, for for a buyout. Also looks great here, and I like this kind of, of trades. And from time to time. You know, not on. I'm not going to bet on my house, but to put some money on CRM, to put uh, some money on uh, Yelp, and suddenly you can get a great movement uh, to the upside. All right, let's uh, let's continue, and I want to get uh, to the earnings season, and one possible driver of the uncertain sentiment is earnings. Nearly. Uh, 2,400 companies have reported earnings uh, since the Q1 2015 reporting period began on uh, 8th of April. And here is a breakdown of the earnings and revenue bit rates by sector. So we have uh, the earnings in the blue bar and the revenues uh, bit rate percent, percentage uh, 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 bit rate uh, in the green ones, green bars. Um, for all companies that have reported, and this, uh, th these are the figures for all of the companies across sectors this se season, 60% have beaten consensus EPS estimates, while 49% of them beaten revenue forecasts. 
The earning bit rate is about in line with historical average, which, which is about 60%, while the revenue bit rate is about 10 percentage points lower than historical uh, average, which is also about 60%. So that's a negative for corporate America as we enter the middle of 2015 now. But it could be beneficial for bulls hoping the 0% interest rate stay in place for longer. So, you know, if uh, all the figures and all the fundamental f figures around uh, uh, if, uh, the, the firms of uh, US uh, are low, that gives another reason for the Fed to wait with the rate hikes. In terms of earnings bit rates, the energy and materials uh, holds here, the, the, uh, the energy and materials sectors uh, holds the weakest bit rates, while technology consumer staples and consumer discretionary uh, have the strongest uh, bit rate 68% to 63%. Regarding revenues, uh, this is the chart for revenues. Uh, energy, materials, and utilities have the worst uh, bit rates. Okay. Um, all right. Back to this one. All right. Sorry. Uh, he, uh, we are looking on the green one. Sorry. So, um, uh, uh, energy, materials, and utilities. All right. Holding the the the, the, the worst one, 35 percent to 28 percent, while technology and financials have the best as we can see uh, we can see here the financials 57 percent and we can see here the technology with 57 percent bit rate in the sales line now the financial sector stands out because uh, just look on the figures of the financial its revenue bit rate is stronger than uh, than all 57 percent to 49 percent for all companies but uh, it it has earnings bit rate of 59% which is lower than the average of 60%. The next chart uh, looks at the earnings bit rate this season by sector for, for all 2,400 uh, companies that have reported versus the 423 companies for the S&P 500 that have reported. The earning, and let's look on the comparison between be, between all the companies and specifically the 500 companies of the S&P 500, which are the large cap. And just understand what a great ana analysis we can get here. The earnings bit trade for the S&P 500, all right, uh, companies is much higher than the earnings bit rate for none S&P 500 companies. For all companies that have reported, and this is my red laser here, the bit rate stands at 60%, but it's 67%, it's 67%, this is um, the purple uh, bar, 67% for uh, just the S&P 500 uh, companies. So it's, it, it's much, much uh, higher. Um, the spread also, uh, if we get to the energy, uh, the, the energy sector holds the great spread between um, the stocks that actually beated uh, Wall Street expectations uh, from all the companies versus the S&P 500 companies. 71% of the energy companies in the S&P 500 were, were able to beat um, the analysts' consensus in Wall Street, while only ha uh, barely half of uh, the whole company, the all companies of the energy sector, uh, were able to beat analyst uh, analyst uh, consensus ahead of this earning uh, 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 earning season. While S and P 500 companies have been able to beat earning estimates this season at a much higher rate than mid and small cap companies, the Reverse is the case for revenue bits, and we will see that right now. And what is all the meanings here? So here we see again the blue line. The blue bar is for all the companies, and the purple line is for the S and P 500 companies. And right now we are analyzing the revenue bit rate. Um, this season, actually. Um, 
this season actually we saw the spirit between the revenue beat rate for s p 500 companies and all companies is minus seven percent can you see it minus seven percent 49 percent for all companies and 42 percent for uh, the s p 500 it's just the opposite of what we saw for all the companies in the earning bit rate for all the companies it stood at 60 percent and plus seven percent for the s p 500 uh, companies so what is going on around it, around here and how actually um how actually can we explain it so actually large cap uh, uh, what we can say is that um um what we can say it is that probably it's much easier for the for the large cap for the s p 500 you know to make all sort of manipulations where it comes to the bottom line when it comes to um when it comes to the profit but it's much more difficult to make these kinds of um of of manipulation when you are ta when you are ta trying uh, to touch the top line the sales the sales lines line and this is why i consider the um, the revenue to be a much more uh, important for me when I'm al analyzing, a, you know, a report, a financial report of any company, than just to say, all right, uh, the company beat its uh, its uh, its profit target, its uh, it, its earnings, and this is, so this is a reason to get uh, on board uh, with uh, this stock. Now. Um, Let's get to the dollar and lately um, we discussed uh, in the Investors Club a recent uh, dollar, uh, the recent dollar movement. It had a massive uh, and huge rally in recent months and uh, then it, it, it made it here to a new high and then it just uh, drifted uh, back uh, to, the uh, to, to, to the support line. Um, now, um, of course, all the pullback uh, right now was uh, impacting the performance of equities and domestic stocks that generate all or the bulk of the re revenue in the US were underperforming and you can just look on the IWM uh, this is the chart that uh, tracks this is the ETF that tracks the Russell 2000 the small cap say, index while big international stocks that generate much of the revenue overseas we're outperforming and this is exactly the s p 500 so if i take a look on that the s p 500 just made it to a new high on last thursday while the iwm which tracks the russell 2000 the small companies which are more focused on the domestic market they um they benefit from high dollar they are actually don't like to see this so they are actually uh, being hurt by a weak dollar they actually underperforming right now the market and this is the very very important connection between the small caps and the big caps to the movement uh, of uh, the dollar now since uh, since since the high here actually the dollar has a uh, went lower and its impact on stocks has gotten even more extreme through um right now uh, we can see that uh, till friday the average stock in the russell 1000 that generates all of its revenue domestically is up 1.59 percent uh, since the dollar peaked in on the 13th of uh, march right here okay the average stock that generates 50 percent plus of its revenue outside of uh, the US is actually up 3.5 times that much at 5.28% while the, all of the stocks, the average stock, uh, went up by 2.84%. So clearly, investors have shifted out of domestic names and into international over the last few weeks as the dollar's breakdown has continued. Now, the narrative from companies reporting Q1 2015 earnings was that the dollar's sharp move higher in Q1 impacted revenues negatively. 
With the dollar falling sharply so far in Q2, as we can see uh, here on the dollar index uh, chart, um, the narrative should be flipped when reports for the quarter start getting released in, a, 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 in early July, in the second week of July. Domestic companies may struggle with earnings due to the dollar's weak performance uh, this qu quarter, while internationals should have an easier time meeting expectations. Right now, the dollar is down more than 6% since, uh, since it uh, uh, reached its peak on the 13th of uh, March uh, this year. The dollar index, and you can use the UUP, all right, to, to uh, UUP, sorry, to track it, and I'll just write it down. And you can actually buy and sell uh, this ETF uh, or using uh, Colmex. Um, and the dollar index is right now resting on a key support, as you can see uh, uh, right now, near the rising 200 uh, moving uh, average. If it holds around this key support, it could mark a turning point, which first of all can benefit those who are willing to take the chance on the UUP just to uh, take a position on the on the bet that the dollar is from there just made you know a little bit of a pullback, but it's going back higher to the recent highs, uh, and it's going to continue its uh, previous uh, uptrends. But also it's going to affect uh, the domestic international. Uh, narrative once again. So if the downtrend remains in place, continue to focus on sectors with heavy international exposures, uh, 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 heavy international exposures, um, like, you know, like the industrials and like the consumer uh, staples. Uh, but uh, if a uh, current supports ends up holding and uh, we see um the, the uh, and we see the UUP the dollar index going back up then we can actually uh, get we would we would like to get exposure to the sec sectors like the energy sectors or like um the small caps uh, like uh, the utilities which uh, actually most of the companies are us companies that are focused on the domestic market rather than the international uh, market all right from there Let's continue and get to the economic uh, scorecard. In economic data, it was another weak week uh, last week, while labor market data we saw on Thursday actually was mostly positive. Every other category of indicator missed. Now, cross currents caused by weak economic uh, data and the resulting speculation about delayed Fed rate hikes right now are supporting the stock market. Investors, you know, are latching on the idea right now that bad news could be good because it will keep the Fed from hiking. But that could be very, very problematic, I think, if unemployment continues to drop and wage hikes uh, pick up steering inflation all right back with you back with you um so right now investors are latching on the idea that a uh, bad news could be good news as a uh, uh, bad news could be a uh, good news uh, but but it, as i said it, it's going to be problematic if uh, we saw a reverse in the unemployment and uh, uh, in the end steering inflation um all right, give me one minute just to set everything here, right? All right, okay, all right. So uh, so back into um, the things. Um, the consumer right now, and uh, we got the Michigan sentiment with a, a sharp drop uh, on Friday, and, uh, and the consumer is proving to be the wild card in the economic uh, outlook and showing a surprise weakness in spending and now also in a sentiment con consumer sentiment as we can see here dropped sharply friday to 88.6 uh, uh, this is the reading a seven month low from 95.9 and the blame goes to rising gasoline prices we all feel it in our wallet we all feel it in our pockets 
According to one analysis I saw during uh, the weekend, um, sentiment has lost more than five points 21 times in the last 10 years and when it did the market declined in the following five days more often than not with an average drop on of a half percent now it was only up 38 percent of the time so you know this is exactly where we are heading this uh, week and these statistics relates to uh, this week more often than not the following five days are going to be negative for the market because of the drop in Michigan uh, sentiment. The run of soft economic data in the first quarter has now clearly spilled into the second quarter with some disappointing misses in just the past week. Uh, we saw a big disappointment also in the, in the, in, 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 uh, in the retail sales. Uh, producer price inflation data, industrial production, and now consumer uh, sentiment, those misses helped push market expectations for a first Fed red rate hike past December. And right now we are talking about January as the first Fed rate hike, with fewer market players now betting on a September rate increase. So we can actually, um, you know, draw a picture in our mind that we are in a binary situation where either the U.S. has slowed, slowed unexpectedly, where it is more than the weather that impacting the economic in the U.S., or we are going to see a number that is going to say we are all back in business and everything is all fine. All those trends could cause turbulence when central bank minutes and a batch of housing and other data are released uh, in this week ahead. So let's get uh, let's go there and see what is uh, on the deck for this week. So this week, I think uh, what we are going to do is keep data watching. There is housing numbers. That's a good one uh, to watch, and uh, we have a couple of them along the week. Uh, the ex existing home sales uh, on Thursday, but uh, we have also uh, tomorrow on Tuesday the housing starts and the building uh, permits. Also, uh, we've got uh, the Fed minutes on the 20th. Uh, this is uh, the th this is going to be a, a big one. Uh, it's going to be released at two o'clock. Eastern time. That means on this specific day, uh, and I'm talking for you, day, tra day traders, but also to all the traders and investors around here, um, the mass, the massive, the massive action on Wednesday is actually going to be shifted to the um, second, second, uh, se se second half of the day. Um, it's going to be. Actually, we are going to be focused. I'm going to be, to be very, very focused on the last two hours of Wednesday. Now, um, also uh, aside of uh, these all uh, economic releases, we are going to have um, we are going to have a couple of earnings, and uh, this is and uh, I'll just uh, right now project uh, my screen again. All right. Okay. Just want you to uh, just want to show you uh, our daily report. This is our daily uh, report, Trainet uh, daily report. Here you can see all the economic uh, calendar and the earnings calendar, and we have a couple of names, especially uh, uh, earnings coming from uh, the retails uh, like uh, Walmart, which is going to be big on Tuesday before market opening. Also, we are going to have a uh, Home Depot, um, Autodesk on uh, Tuesday after market uh, close, and if we scroll down we have target this is the second biggest uh, retailer in uh, in United States uh, also box that actually uh, was one of the a uh, very small group of technology firms that made it to Wall Street IPO uh, this year earlier this week uh, earlier this year actually I think this is going to be its first earning report in Wall Street box very interesting after the clo the closing bell for a uh, 
Wednesday. So we have here lot of, lots of uh, data to digest for uh, companies. And of course, for us as day traders, we are going to have a lot, lo lots of, uh, you know, lots of uh, ingredients and uh, lots of stuff uh, to work around. Um, Minutes from the Fed, back to the minutes uh, from the Fed, this is a uh, Wednesday and just look how I highlighted it with a high, uh, with high importance, uh, the impact on the market is high here and they are going to uh, release Wednesday at 2 o'clock. Um, at the April meeting last time, the central bank actually downgraded its view on the economy, but it's also left the door open for rate hikes this year, making it, cl it clear its decision would be based on the incoming economic uh, data. Uh, since then, as we saw, much of the data has disappointed. Uh, economists right now have been actively lowering already negative first quarter growth while second quarter growth has proven sluggish and is now expected closer to two percent than three percent so should we see a continuation of weak economic data that at the very very short term should bode well well for the market as it's going to delay uh, the first fed rate hike all right, let's get uh, let, let's continue, and we want to finish with the IPO. IPO is it hot or not? So you know, with the recent increase in the amount uh, of debut of new companies that make it to Wall Street this year, I thought it w and it started very very slow, but it's uh, you know catching uh, uh, it ca it's catching right now the momentum. I thought it would be a good idea to take a look at a few of the high profile IPOs from the past six weeks, and then later we are going to discuss a couple of IPOs that are going to uh, to make their debut this week. Uh, more specifically, I want us to focus on four huge deals. Uh, Bonjagales, Bojanglas, don't know how to pronounce it. This is uh, some Chinese, uh, one Chinese uh, companies. Here we have Etsy, Party City, and Go uh, Daddy. So I consider it part of my job, you know, to get you familiar with uh, with these newly public companies, so that you know you will know your IPO. You will have enough tools to figure out whether uh, they are going to be winners or they are going to be that. And, and if some f something is going to be a winner, uh, should we get there or no? And, and in another minute, I'm just going to show you the statistics why this IPO market is so excited and what a great opportunity it holds for you as private investors. First up is Bojanglas. B-O-J-I. This is a quick service restaurant and I'll just uh, bring up my chart. Uh, so let's put it on the chart. Uh, all right. And this is uh, and I'll just, you know, get rid of all the moving averages I see I have here on the chart. All right. And this is how an IPO looks like on the daily chart. You don't have a lot of bars. All right. It's just started on the 8th of uh, on the 8th of uh, May at uh, one and a half weeks ago. Now, um, it's a quick service restaurant chain that is primarily known for, for scratch biscuits and fried chicken. It has 622 locations, uh, mostly in the southern region of the United States. Now, BOJI, BOJA, sorry, um, came public one week ago at $19 and has since taken off closing uh, the week just over $62, uh, 60, $26 at 26.42 on Friday. And while it does have a loyal following uh, and strong fundamentals with, you know, projections of growth, and this, this is part of the things I like to look on a stock when I think to invest uh, in it, there are two things that concern me. First, first of all, the stock is a bit expensive versus similar restaurants. Second, I see investors getting out of the domestic restaurant stocks like BOJA, 
right now and trans transition and, and, and flipping into U.S. companies with international exposure because of the, the movement of the dollar and the impact of the dollar index and the movement of the dollar currency on the business of the international and the domestic companies in U.S. So, you know, right now I wouldn't be a buyer here. I still like this company, but at the right price and I will be willing to get on board if it comes down to the low 20s so this is the first one b o j a F second one is etsy e t s y and uh, let's get uh, also to the chart of etsy and this one actually had some tough times since uh, its uh, debut uh, pre uh, in mid april and actually we have here a very very harsh uh, you know, welcome, welcome from uh, Wall Street to this uh, stock. And there is a reason for that. You know, um, Etsy, first of all, it's an online marketplace for people to buy and sell unique handmade goods. Unfortunately, I see red flags all over the place for this company, especially with a few things it has said recently about its long-term growth trajectory. When a company comes public, it is required to list all of the risk factors related to its business in a prospectus. When I read this prospectus, it was just plain scary. And I'll tell you why. And I'm just, you know, and, and I'm just reading right now. The prospectus stated as follows. This is the company. We have a history of operating losses and we may not achieve or maintain profitability in the future. We expect that our operating expenses will increase substantially. All right, that's already not for me to hear this. And they actually need to, um, they actually need, I think, to replace the, uh, the, the, the marketing, all right? Uh, but what really scared me was when the prospectus basically said the company's values could interfere with making money, all right? And I'm reading again. Adherence to our values and our focus on long-term substantially influence our short or medium-term financial performance. I, guys, just can't see a path to profitability here. And given its statement in the prospectus, I worry that it doesn't seem to care about profitability and <laughs> let's make it very, very clear. In Wall Street, the profits, you know, the profits is the most important thing to investors, to the CEO, to all the shareholders. So no thanks regarding Etsy. I'm re I rather pass uh, on this one to the other to, to the next one and the next one is party city let's go party and um and the party right now let's put it on the chart PRTY right now it's traded it's trading just over $22 uh, up from its IPO price of $17 not bad party city is the leading retailer of party supplies it has more than 900 locations spanning the US and Canada. Uh, if you need to make you know, a party for your retirement or a party for your new child born with uh, maybe a barbecue in, in your backyard this weekend, you know, Party City is your best, uh, best bet because probably it has the matching napkins and tiki torch for that. So there you have my green light on that. I like this. Uh, I like this stock. And by the way, I'm already holding some shares on PRTY. Last but not least, GoDaddy GDDY. And uh, this is th th this was this was another big um, big and very high profile IPO recently. Um, GoDaddy came public in April at $20 and has been trading side the way since then around $60, $26 right now as the close of Friday it traded for a uh, $26.51. GoDaddy is the online company 
that allows customers to buy domain names along with website building products and security for a business to expand their web presence so if you need if you need a presence online uh, this is uh, the this is where you are going to shop for all the things you need under one uh, under one roof now I'd be willing to give this one my blessing for speculation, but only on a pullback down to the low 20s. So keep it, uh, you know, on your wish list because when it comes back, when you see, you know, a sea of red on the screens on, of Wall Street, maybe GDDY, GoDaddy, will be able to go enough down for us to take a, to have a good entry on this one. All right, let's go to uh, quickly to the IPOs of this week, and this is something very very interesting. I'm just using um, the site IPO Scoop. This is a great site. All of you should be aware of. Uh, it's focused only and only, uh, just and only. Um, the all IPO, IPO arena, IPO, um, IPO place. Um, we have here the IPO calendar and we have here also the statistics and this is uh, why I told you earlier. One minute. Okay. Okay, and, and this is why I told you earlier I, I, I like, um, I like making I like IPOs. All right. Okay. B b back to the b b back to the side. So just look on the statistics, and this is just breathtaking. Okay. Um, at the bottom of the window right now. Number uh, last 100 IPOs. Let's get the statistics. So. 68 of them went up, 32 went down. So, you know, this is a great starting point for any investor to be involved in a strategy where 68% of them are just going up. Now, what if you have a strategy that can tell you which of the 100 are the 68 that are going up? And luckily enough, you know, this is something that I learned in Wall Street and this is something that I'm willing to share with you Actually, I'm sharing it already in our most advanced training course, Top Trader, that is taking place uh, right now uh, this uh, th this week's with a great group uh, of uh, traders. And if you want to get more information about uh, this course, you know, don't hesitate to give me uh, to give me a call and just write me uh, to Shlomo at Trainet, uh, dot com. The percentage change from issue price. This is, you know, th th this is actually um, a, a, a strikes us at 24.7% up, all right? This is a great performance. By the way, this performance take into consideration, this is the average of the whole 100 la la last IPOs. That means it holds also the, 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 the weak performance of the 32 stocks that actually went down, all right? So... Let's uh, understand what stocks um, can, uh, what are uh, the IPOs that are going, um, what IPOs are going to get to Wall Street this week. I'll just uh, click on the IPO calendar. Okay, and here it is. We start on Wednesday. The Wednesday starts, um, where it is? We have here. Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. Okay, yeah. Black Knight, Black Knight Financial Service. Symbol is BKFS. All right. It's expected to raise about four hundred and twenty-five million dollars at the top end of the expected price range of um, twenty-two to twenty-five dollars per share. You can see that um, top lead managers of Wall Street are going uh, to lead uh, this IPO: J.P. Morgan, Bank of America, uh, Wells. Fargo, um, and this is going to be um, uh, this is going to be the most um, the most bi the, the biggest the biggest IPO in this uh, week IPOs. Uh, next, we have on Thursday a very very interesting uh, another interesting IPO. This is a Bazoon B Z U, and this is the symbol in which, by the way, Alibaba owns a sizable stake. It's expected to raise about one hundred and one hundred and forty three. A million dollars valuing the e-commerce services company at about 632 million dollars the company 
which says it has a fifth of China's e-commerce solution market, intends to reinvest most of the initial public offering proceeds in its marketing and R&D operations, but has also hinted it plans to make acquisitions. On the same day, Canadian e-commerce sof software maker Shopify, right, Shopify, it's going uh, to have the, to, to get the very very um, attractive symbol of shop is expected to raise as much as one a little bit more than 100 million dollars in its ipo valuing the company at up to 1 billion dollars this is a, a company based in ottawa canada plans to list in both canada and the united states all right guys we are coming to the end of another very very exciting uh, investment uh, investment club thank you very much all of you for being part of it for uh, you know for for, for 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 asking questions for being uh, for just being a part of it and and this is just a community that is getting larger and larger and this is our way to give back and to just equip you with the best tools as we make our homework um, just a couple of uh, minutes before uh, all the wheels of Wall Street are starting uh, to run. So thank you again for being here with me. We are every week on Monday, 8 o'clock Eastern Time at the morning, just before the, stick, uh, the, 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 the week starts. Hopefully this is a useful uh, information. Everything is going up uh, to YouTube and I wish each and every one of you the most successful uh, trading uh, week. Thank you very much and see you later in the room. Bye-bye.